paramedic. Snake, it's so good to hear from you again. Same here. It's been a week, hasn't it? Four days, actually. Huh? I visited you in the hospital. You were still unconscious, though. Ah, then you must have seen me naked. Yeah, but you were all wrapped up in bandages and tubes, so I couldn't do anything but look. Better luck next time. Mm, let's hope so. But seriously, don't forget that you were like that until just yesterday. In fact, you really shouldn't even be on this mission. Keep an eye on your stamina gauge. If you start to run low, don't push yourself. Eat something to replenish your stamina. And try not to get yourself hurt. If you're wounded or get bitten by a venomous animal, go into the survival viewer immediately and treat yourself using cure. Yeah, yeah. I can see you still know how to nag. You're welcome. And I can see you still don't know when to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Maybe so. By the way, I heard you're going to lose your medical license if this mission fails. Yes, there was talk of that, but the mission won't fail, will it? Of course not. Good. I believe in you. But you know what? I really don't care about my medical license. Didn't they use that to force you to participate in this operation? No, I volunteered. Why? So that I could watch over you. Huh. Snake, you're the best agent I've ever seen. But you push yourself too hard. You're reckless. Someone has to stop you from getting into trouble to make sure you and the boss don't kill each other. Mm -hmm. So that's why I volunteered. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better guardian angel than me, right? Thanks. Stop right there. Huh? You can thank me when you get back. All right. Snake, that area is inhabited by the Japanese flying squirrel. Japanese flying squirrels are non-venomous, and they shouldn't attack you. The head, front legs, hind legs, and tail of the Japanese flying squirrel are connected by a membrane of skin, which allows the squirrel to glide from tree to tree. It says here that if it catches a good wind, it can fly more than a hundred yards. Sounds like it's going to be tough to catch one. So, aren't you going to ask me? You know it. How does it taste? Not sure. Not sure. The guy doesn't say anything about it. Why not? Gee, maybe it's because no one would ever think of eating a flying squirrel. Then I must be the first one. <sighs> maybe you are. Snake, King Cobras are making their home in the area you're in now. The King Cobra is the world's largest venomous snake. Its large size means that it has a lot of venom to inject. One bite is supposedly enough to kill an elephant. And it's extremely vicious as well, so watch out. If you get bitten by a king cobra and injected with venom, your life will start to decrease rapidly. As soon as you're bitten, go into the survival viewer and use cure to give yourself a serum injection. The king cobra's diet consists mostly of other snakes. Be careful, or you might end up as its next meal. Got it. So... What? How does it taste? Yep. Ugh, it seems you're the one whose diet consists of other snakes. You're making me blush. The guide says they taste just fine. Mm. Ugh. Snake, whatever happens to you, make sure you leave a descendant, okay? Are you saying you want to have my baby? No. I'm saying that in the 21st century, the genes of soldiers like you are going to be in high demand. Genes. Uh-huh. Remember when Watson and Crick discovered the double helix structure of DNA back in 1953? Ah, uh, no. You know, they won the Nobel Prize in Medicine for it the year before last. Of course, you have to feel sorry for Pauling and Franklin. They were researching the exact same thing. Sorry, I don't follow. Inside every living creature are little blueprints called genes. Through the union of the sperm and egg cells, these blueprints are transformed and inherited by the next generation. That's why parents and children resemble each other. The concept of genes was first proposed over a hundred years ago by Mendel, but he didn't know what they were exactly. For a while, it was thought that chromosomes were composed not of deoxyribonucleic acid, but of proteins called polypeptides. Later, it was shown that deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA, was a biological macromolecule. 
Then 11 years ago, Watson and Crick discovered that DNA had a double helix structure. Yeah, this is all fascinating stuff, but what exactly does it have to do with me? The inherent characteristics of any given individual are determined by his or her genes. By duplicating a set of superior genes, a separate body with the same set of characteristics, a clone can be created. But genes don't control a person's fate. That's true. But having an offspring that's genetically identical to the parent is more efficient, right? You can expect better results that way. More efficient? You can't mass produce human beings. Maybe. But now that we know the true nature of genes, human cloning is that much closer to reality. Nuclear transplanting is already theoretically possible. So one day... My genes are going to be a valuable commodity. Exactly. They'd never let that happen. Just think, even if your body dies, you survive and go on to bigger and better accomplishments. If you think about it, it's kind of an honor. Does that kind of technology seriously appeal to you? Well, I am a doctor. Hmm. I can't condone it on moral grounds, but I'm fascinated by the possibilities. Especially when I see such an excellent specimen as yourself. Yeah, well, thanks for the compliment, but it doesn't make me feel any better. Don't be so glum. It's not like it's going to happen anytime soon. We'll just have to wait and see. You should be able to find Ezo Comfrey in that area. Ezo Comfrey is a plant in the Comfrey family that's found only in Selena Yarsk. If you find one, you can use it as a cast to treat broken bones. How can a plant be turned into a splint? The roots of the Ezo Comfrey are extremely sticky. You can use them as a kind of plaster cast to fasten the affected area in place. I get it. 